Hi friends, let us learn about the special connective tissue in our body. So what are the special connective tissue? We have three specialized connective tissues in our body. Number one, bones. Number two, cartilages. And the number three, the fluid connective tissue called as blood. So first let us learn about the cartilages. And this picture is telling you that what are the locations in our body where we can see the presence of cartilages? Number one, the pinna is made up of cartilages. And also the nasal cartilages. So in the nose also, as a skeleton of the nose, we have cartilages. And this picture is showing you the thyroid cartilage which is present in front of our neck. That is also made up of cartilage. And we have Costal cartilages. These cartilages are connecting the anterior ends of the ribs to the sternum. So these are called as costal cartilages. And another example is intervertebral disc that is present between the bodies of adjacent vertebrae. Additionally, it, as a part of your joints, for an example, the articular cartilages and also the glenoid labrum in the shoulder joint acetabular labrum in the hip joint. These are also made up of cartilage. And in this picture, the last example I would like to mention you about the menisci of the knee joint. These are made up of cartilages. And the cartilage is having another synonym called as chondros. So chondros is denoting the cartilage. Similarly, the osteo osteon is denoting the bonds. So the cartilages are special connective tissue composed of cells, fibers and these fibers are embedded in a gel-like matrix. So the gel-like matrix is the special feature. Similarly, if you compare with the bones, the matrix portion of the bones which is really harder because of presence of the calcium and phosphate salts. And let us compare the bones and cartilages. And that we will explain under the heading properties of the cartilages. These cartilages are more elastic than the bones and these are derived embryologically these are derived from the mesenchyme and generally the cartilages are avascular or we can say less vascular vascularity is very less. And we have an outer connective tissue covering for the cartilages this is called as perichondrium. And because of less vascularity, comparatively, the cartilages are, its regeneration is very limited. Once it got some injuries, its healing or the regeneration is very limited because of less vascularity. Let us see what are the components portions of the cartilage. As we have seen earlier, in a connective tissue, we can see different types of the cells. And additionally, we have the matrix. And the matrix consists of two portions, ground substance and the fibers. So if you consider any cartilage like different types, hyaline, elastic and fibrocartilage, you can see all these components. And the cells of the cartilages are called as chondroblasts and chondrocytes. So two types of cells can be seen. So the first thing, the chondroblasts. Chondroblasts are very young, immature chondrocytes. These are seen mostly towards the perichondrium. And these are smaller and generally oval in shape. These are called as chondroblasts. These are young cells. But we have another type called as chondrocytes. Chondrocytes are larger and matured cells. And towards the core portion of the cartilage, we can see plenty of chondrocytes. And there is a space for the chondrocytes inside the cartilage. This space is generally called as lacunae. Lacunae. Second component is the ground substance. That is in the matrix. An example for the ground substance. Glycosaminoglycan we can remember. Generally called as the GAC. Okay. So this is the ground substance by which the cartilage is made up of. And the fibers, if you consider the cartilage, mainly in the cartilage we can see type 2 collagen fibers. As we have seen earlier, in the bonds we can see the type 1 cartilage, sorry, type 1 collagen fiber. Here in the cartilage, predominantly you can see the type 2 collagen fibers. 
Now, let us classify the cartilages in our body. Structurally, we have three types of cartilages in our body. Number one, hyaline cartilage. So, this is the picture to show you the hyaline cartilage. And number two, elastic cartilage. This is the elastic cartilage. And the third variety is fibrocartilage or also called as white fibrocartilage. And these three pictures are telling you that all the three cartilages are different in appearance. Structurally they are different. And that's why the distribution and property also will be different in these three types of cartilages. So now let us learn the first variety that is the hyaline cartilage in detail. And this is the clear-cut picture to show you how the hyaline cartilage structure is. And you know this hyaline cartilage is something like glass-like cartilage. There is a reason because this is transparent compared to the elastic and the fibrocartilages. This hyaline cartilage is somewhat transparent. And here in the hyaline cartilage, the chondrocytes are distributed in the cartilage but there is a peculiar arrangement of the chondrocytes in the hyaline cartilage. These are seen in the lacunae as certain groups of cells or clusters of the cells. Aggregations of the chondrocytes are the together along with its neighboring matrix that is looking like some eggs in the nest. That's why these structures are called as cell nests. And in hyaline cartilage, we have more number of cell nests when compared to the other cartilages. And this cell nests, because of the cell nests and its peculiar matrix, quickly we can identify the hyaline cartilage. Next is the matrix. The surrounding area, surrounding to the cell nests, we can see the matrix. But in hyaline cartilage, we can see two types of matrix. Number one, territorial matrix and number two interterritorial matrix let us see what actually the territorial and interterritorial matrix are the matrix which is very close to the cell nest it is darkly stained and this darkly stained area is called as territorial matrix because very close to the cell nest the concentration of the ground substance will be comparatively higher quite higher and in between the cell nest, the matrix will be comparatively lightly stained because there is less concentration of this ground substance. So that pale stained matrix is called as interterritorial matrix. And here in this hyaline cartilage, in the peripheral portion is covered by the connective tissue covering that is called as the perichondrium. perichondrium. And I would like to mention you the most important feature in case of hyaline cartilage. In advanced age group, this hyaline cartilage can undergo ossification. That means these chondrocytes can be replaced by the osteocytes and this hyaline cartilage can get converted into bonds, especially in advanced age groups. And here, this is the slide picture to show you how the hyaline cartilage is looking like microscopically. And we have the perichondrial region with the chondroblasts. Plenty of chondroblasts are there in the periphery. And this is the core portion of the cartilage. There we can see plenty of cell nests. Many cell nests are aggregated together. And already I have mentioned the territorial matrix. We can see very close to the cell nests. And additionally the pale stained interterritorial matrix also is seen. Cell nest, territorial matrix and interterritorial matrix. These features can be clearly identified in case of hyaline cartilage. So the last let us explain what are the locations of hyaline cartilage in our body. In our body where actually these hyaline cartilages are distributed. There are plenty of examples. So you can look at the first diagram. This is the sternum and behind this is the vertebral column and here we have 12 pairs of ribs. 12 ribs on either side and the anterior ends of these ribs are connected to the sternum via costal cartilage. We can clearly see. No any ribs are directly attached to the sternum but these ribs are anteriorly attached to the sternum via costal cartilages. So these costal cartilages are made up of hyaline cartilage. Number two, in the anterior aspect of our neck, 
there are laryngeal cartilages and the first and foremost the largest laryngeal cartilage that is the thyroid cartilage and just below that we have the cricoid cartilage this thyroid cartilage and cricoid cartilage is entirely made up of hyaline cartilage and just below the cricoid cartilage again we have the windpipe of the or the trachea trachea is made up of several incomplete cartilaginous rings so this tracheal rings also is made up of hyaline cartilage hyaline cartilage additionally if you consider the articular cartilages the articulating ends of the bones which are covered by a thin plate of hyaline cartilage that is articular cartilages the next variety of the cartilage is elastic cartilage as the name explains you elastic cartilages are showing elasticity the main difference here is in the matrix because in the matrix you have several elastic fibers are the more number of elastic fibers can be demonstrated in the matrix that is the main difference and you know these elastic cartilages are also called as yellow cartilage why because a fresh specimen of the elastic cartilage will be yellowish in color and appearance and these type of cartilages are more elastic and flexible than that of hyaline cartilage and fibrocartilage let us see how the chondrocytes are distributed the chondrocytes are comparatively larger in size but most of the cells are distributed individually but still we can appreciate the cell nest but very less in number so the chondrocytes which are present in the lacune the number of cell nests are very less but in hyaline cartilage already we have seen more cell nests can be seen and the matrix here you cannot distinguish between the territorial or interterritorial matrix such a distribution we cannot see in case of matrix but the matrix will be showing presence of more and more elastic fibers these elastic fibers are providing the elasticity for the elastic cartilage now let us see what are the locations of elastic cartilage in our body number 1 pinna the cartilages of the pinna is elastic cartilage similarly if you consider the epiglottis okay the epiglottis also is made up of exclusively elastic cartilage and a small portion of the cartilage in a portion of the eustachian tube also eustachian tube or, or this auditory tube is connecting the middle ear cavity with the pharynx so its medial portion is made up of cartilage and that cartilage also is elastic in variety and the last cartilage fibrocartilage the third variety fibrocartilages are also called as white fibrocartilages and these cartilages are made up of mainly different different bigger bundles of type 1 collagen fibers these type 1 collagen fibers are running parallelly and already we have seen these are branching and the bundles are anastomosing with each other and here the most important feature is no perichondrium in case of fibrocartilage but the chondrocytes are having a specific arrangement these chondrocytes are arranged in a linear pattern and the lacune is the space between the bundles of collagen fibers the small or the narrow space between the adjacent bundles of collagen fibers that is the lacune where you can see the linear arrangement of the chondrocytes this is how the structure of fibrocartilage is and now let us see what are the locations of fibrocartilage in our body the best example is the intervertebral disc the peripheral portion of the intervertebral disc is made up of fibrocartilage okay and additionally one more example i would like to mention you the pubis symphysis the pubis of right hip and left hip is separated by a thin plate of cartilage that is made up of fibrocartilage and again we have in the shoulder joint you have the glenoid labrum and in the hip joint you have the acetabular labrum to complete that ball and socket joint to increase the concavity of the socket there is fibrocartilaginous pad these are respectively called as glenoid labrum in the shoulder joint and acetabular labrum in the hip joint and the last example in the menisci of the knee joint we have the right meniscus and left meniscus in the superior aspect or the articular aspect of the tibia shows presence of 
two menisci, medial meniscus and lateral meniscus respectively. And these menisci are also made up of fibrocartilage. Thank you. That's all about the fibrocartilage. Sorry, cartilage.